Hey everybody. All right, we're moving on to section 12.4 now. And what we're going to start doing in this section is we're going to be working with equations of lines, but a different form of the equation of a line than you're used to. You're used to point slope form or slope intercept form. We're going to look at how you write the vector equation of a line in which we're going to learn to use vectors to write equations of lines in either two or in three dimensions. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is show you how writing the vector equation of a line is related to what you already know because it uses similar concepts. And so I'm going to write an equation for the line that you see in this picture right here in point slope form. Actually, I'll talk about a couple different ways that you could do that. And then I'll show you how the same concepts going into write, writing the vector form of that equation. Now, whenever you're trying to write the point slope form of an equation of a line or slope intercept form or anything, Really, there's two things that you have to know in order to write that equation. You have to know what a point on the line is. In this case, I know two of them and I can find others. And you also have to know the direction of the line, which we call the slope, right? Direction, this is, the slope is also the direction. And I'm going to be using that word direction quite a lot when I'm referring to the vector form of a linear equation here. All right, let me go ahead and write the point slope form of this equation. You see I've written the coordinates for point A and I've written the slope of the line on the graph and then you know that I could write the equation of that line as being y minus 4 is equal to negative 2 sevenths times x plus 4. All right, again, there are two key things that had to be, that had to be thought of in order to write that equation. I'll label those now. To write the equation of a line, you have to know the starting point from which your line is going to go. All right, now you can start at any point on a line. We happen to start at point A. We could have started at this point that I would have labeled B or any other point on the line, but you pick a starting point and you also have to describe the direction that the line goes from that starting point. In point slope form, of course, that was accomplished by the slope. Well, it turns out that we can use vectors to describe each of these two things. We can use a vector to describe where the starting point for a line is and we can use a vector to describe the direction that a line is going in as well. Isn't that what a vector does partially is it shows a direction? Now one of the things that you're going to get used to is that instead of using x and y, we're going to use the, the variables t and r to describe the vector form of a linear equation where r is going to correspond with y and then t is going to correspond with x. They don't directly correspond, but that's the analogy that I'm going to use for right now. So when I'm writing the vector form of the equation, it's going to be r equals something. And what I want to do then is figure out how do I describe where the starting point for this line is. Well, we're going to use a position vector for that. And if you recall, a position vector tells you how to get to a point on the graph from the origin. And what I'd like to do is describe how do I get to this point A from the origin. And that would be with this vector. There's a position vector OA, which is equal to negative 4, 4. All right, and that's where our equation is going to begin. We're starting out by describing how do you get to the starting point for this line that we're trying to create. So you see the portion of the equation that I've written so far. The next thing we need is a vector that describes the direction that that line travels. All right, so it accomplishes the job of the slope, essentially. And a real simple direction, or yeah, vector that we could use to describe the direction of this line would be the vector that goes from this point A to this point B, right? To go from A to B, you go right seven units, and then you go down two units. All right, so that'll be our direction vector. Now, watch what we do with that when we're writing the vector form of the equation. I said we're going to use the letters R and T instead of X and Y. All right, well, here's where the T is going to come into play. What you're always going to do to write the vector form of an equation is you're going to write the starting point plus t, which is just some constant value, times the direction vector. All right, and so what that means is that if I wanted to make this line, I would have to go from the origin, left four units and up four units, that's what this tells me, and then I would go t number of times in this direction. Now t could be one and a half if I wanted to go one, one and a half times the distance 
from A to B. It could be equal to 0.75 if I just wanted to go three-fourths of the way from A to B. But whatever T is, it tells you how many times you would go the distance from A to B along this direction right there. Multiplying a the constant times a direction. All right, make sure that we're going the right direction for the line. So that accurately describes the equation of this line. Now the general form that you're going to use is going to be this when you're writing the vector form of a linear equation. Our vector form is always going to be r is equal to a plus t times b where a, that lowercase a, is a position vector that tells you how to get to your starting point basically from the origin. B is a directional vector which are the two most important things that you need to know. And I will mention this, that T is what's called a parameter. All right, nothing to do with vectors, it's just a constant value, but it's called the parameter of the, of the linear equation. Good, so R equals A plus TB. That's the vector, vector form of a linear equation. Let's write a few vector equations then. Turns out it's very simple depending on the information that you're given. What we're told first here in this example is that we're going to write a vector equation on the line that is parallel to vector A and passes through point B with given position vector. Uh, and that's what B is, this is a position vector. In fact, let me modify the directions to make that a little more clear. Now right off the bat, if you just pay attention to the letters in that V equals A plus T B, or the R equals A plus T B equation that I gave you, you're going to get confused right here. But if you think about what the different parts stand for, um, then you're not going to have any problem. Remember we said that you need to go to the starting point or a position vector to begin. And for this problem, they've called B the position vector, even though any other that vector form, B normally is the direction, right? But here, B is the position vector or your starting point, and it will be for both of these examples, so I labeled it as such. So we we'll begin our equation by writing r equals 3, negative 1, plus, and now we've got to put t times the directional vector for this line. Now, if one line is parallel to another, would you agree that they go in the same direction? And so since our vector, or our line is parallel to the vector a, that means that the vector A is going the exact same direction as our vector is, and so this is our direction vector. And so we'll get R equals 3, negative 1, plus T times negative 2, 6. And I'll put in the sec second example here that's just as easy, just to show you that this works in three dimensions the same way that it does in two dimensions. By the way, there is no slope intercept or point slope form for three dimensions, but you can write the vector form of a line in three dimensions. And so that's a good reason for us to be learning this skill right there. All right, so for the part two of this example, then the position vector for our starting point is that two, negative five, negative one vector. So we'll say R equals that plus T times the direction vector, which would be the vector a, essentially, since it's parallel to the line that we're creating an equation for. Very simple, right? Okay, now we're going to change up the information that you're given for this next example. This time, we're going to write a vector equation of a line again, but given two points that it passes through. Now, I'm going to have to show you a little bit of theory behind this one, and so I'm actually going to graph these two points. You're not actually required to graph in order to do this, but it will be helpful for your understanding if I do so. So there are the two points, and I'll just label them as A and B to make the problem a little simpler to describe. So there's the equation that we're trying, or the line that we're trying to write the equation of in vector form. Now, as I showed you a little bit ago, the way this is going to work out is we need to go ahead and find a position vector for a starting point to begin. And we can make that starting point either A or B is your choice. I'm going to use A just because that comes first alphabetically, right? And so let's write a position vector for 
that point A. And I'm going to organize some information over here just to help things make a little more sense to you later on as well. I'm going to label that we have a position vector that's called OA. And the other thing we need is a direction vector, and I think this will make perfect sense to you. If we want to make a direction vector, why not use that vector AB for the direction vector? Now, if you've graphed the original two points like we have, then it's easy enough to see that that vector AB is equal to 2, negative 10. But we would like, for two reasons, to not have to graph it. First of all, to save us the trouble of graphing. And second of all, if we were dealing with three dimensions, we couldn't graph it anyway, and so this wouldn't be a helpful strategy for us. So I need to see what could we do to come up with that direction vector 2, negative 10 using the coordinates of the two points A and B that we began with. And so here's the way to do that. If you're ever given the coordinates of two points that a line passes through and you need to find the direction vector from one to the other, what you're going to do is you're going to use the position vectors for each of those. So let me draw the second position vector, OB. And then I want to go back and talk in the context of what we did in our geometric proofs lesson a little bit ago. There are two ways to get from vector A to B, or sorry, from point A to B using vectors. So you can either use vector A, B, or you could go from A to the origin back to B, which is going to be helpful in this case because it's going to help us to see how to use these two position vectors. Now you can see that that vector AB right there is equal to the sum of the opposite of vector OA, all right, the vector AO in other words, plus vector OB. And the sum of vector AO with OB is the same as the difference between OB and OA. Right, because AO was simply the opposite of OA, and so you put a negative sign in front of it, and I can move that to the back. Here's to summarize that. To find the direction vector when you're given two points on a line, simply subtract the position vectors for those two things. Or really, you can just subtract the coordinates, because that corresponds with the position vectors, and that will get you this direction vector right there. Right, negative 6 minus 4 is negative 10. 3 minus 1 is 2. There's our direction vector. And so with all that knowledge in hand, now what we can do is we can just go ahead and write the equation of the line. All right, it took a little bit of explanation, but in practice this won't take it that long. And we can say then that R is equal to either position vector. Well, no, we went from A to B, so we better use point A as our starting point. Is equal to 1, 4 plus T times 2, negative 10. All right, I know it's taking a little bit of time, but we are going to do one more example here. So stick with me, please. Because what I still need to show you how to do is how you would write an equation of a line when you know that it's perpendicular to another vector. Now, as with example A, where we wrote an equation of a line that was parallel to a given vector, um, this vector A that's perpendicular to the line that we're writing an equation for is going to help us find the direction vector that we need to write the equation. But it's a little trickier as far as how you get this. Obviously, our direction vector can't be equal to this because this vector is perpendicular to our line. It's not going the same direction as our line. All right. Now, how are we going to figure out what direction vector then would be perpendicular to this vector? Well, it turns out there's an infinite number of them. And I want to draw your attention to what we talked about with scalar products. Remember that if the scalar product of two vectors is equal to zero, that they're perpendicular. So let me write that. If perpendicular, I'm just going to say vector u and vector v would have a scalar product of zero, right? So what I'm going to do, and this is guess and check because there's a ton of things that will work actually. What we're going to do is we're going to find a vector that we can multiply or do a scalar product with vector a that would give us zero as a result. Now watch the way I come up, come up with this. What I'd like to do is come up with some value x, y, and z so that the scalar product here is equal to zero, right? And think about the way you find a scalar product is you multiply the x components, the y components, the z components, then you add those sums together. So that would give us 1x minus 3y plus 1z in this case is equal to zero. 
Now, I've already hinted or said this directly. I don't remember which. There are an infinite number of values, x, y, and z, that we could plug in that would make this true. And all we have to do is come up with any one of those sets of values. All right, so it's a little bit of guess and check, as I mentioned, but that's easy enough. What I would suggest is using as many zeros as possible. For instance, what if we let y equal zero? Now you might also say, well, can't we just let x and z be equal to zero? But we don't want this to be the zero vector right here. That would be a bad thing for us. We want something other than the zero vector that would give us the scalar product. All right, well, these both have the same coefficients, the x and the z, so why don't we make this x a positive one and the z a negative one, or this x a positive two and the z a negative two. Really doesn't matter, does it? So I'm gonna go with one and negative one. And I think you agree then that one minus zero plus negative one is gonna to equal to zero, right? So our direction vector could be the vector one, zero, negative one. That's going the right direction for us. And then we just couple that along with our position vector for the initial point that's on the graph. And we've got our equation, our vector equation of the line. It would be 2, 5, negative 1, plus our parameter t times the direction vector that we chose to use. That's writing the vector equation of a line. Thanks for watching, everybody. See ya.